So what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a, it's a digital money, but really it's, it's a whole lot more than that. Calling it currency or labeling it something like stocks or anything else, it's like calling the car a horseless carrier. It's, it's really not calling it what it is. We don't truly know a term for it quite yet. It acts like a currency, it acts like a commodity, and it acts like different things that don't function within either of those terms. So uh, we're still trying to learn Kind of what that term is going to be, whether it be a digital currency, virtual currency, cryptocurrency. Uh, but it's it's a lot more than just calling it money, and don't limit it to that specification. Um, Bitcoin acts like cash. It can transmit globally, instantly, and with near zero transaction fees. Um, so if you had family back in Nigeria, you could send money back to them instantly without having to pay exorbitant uh, transaction costs. Uh, it crosses borders with no issues. Uh, if you've read anything recently about people trying to travel from um, maybe Italy with uh, bars of gold in their car, they got pulled over and all that gold got confiscated. Um, so this type of currency allows you to move instantly any type of wealth uh, across borders without any issues. Uh, you just have to remember some things, maybe you have a brain wallet, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, Bitcoin is pseudonymous. That means it's not anonymous. It means that it's sort of like acts like email. Uh, you have a username or a a, uh, a label attached to a wallet that allows you to um, transmit money back and forth. You can't unless you tell someone that it's attached to your specific wallet. Uh, you won't be known where this money is going back and forth. You can see where it is, but you won't be able to see who it is that owns that piece of uh, currency. Um, Bitcoin is decentralized. Um, which means that there is no central authority that can say whether we're going to add more or less currency into the, the flow. It's a, it's a consensus network. Uh, and it came into existence back in 2008, and it was developed by a man for a pseudonym of uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, not Dorian Nakamoto, which, uh, which apparently Newsweek claimed they had found the picture of, uh, of Bitcoin <laughs> Blockchain is really what this innovation has accomplished. It's, it's a decentralized public ledger. And what that means is you have a open, completely uh, public form of transaction. So you can actually see from the very first transaction to the most recent transaction, everything that has passed through Bitcoin. Um, and that allows not only, um, not only currency to be able to flow very freely also be able to attach, um, you'll be able to attach stocks to it, you'll be able to attach different types of property to this. Uh, and this is what, it's called a consensus network, and what that means is that there is no transaction that is allowed, you're not allowed to have a transaction be processed through this blockchain unless everybody agrees that this is what happened. Um, and it, yeah, like I said, it verifies every single transaction since uh, Bitcoin's original genesis. Um, where to buy Bitcoin? You've got uh, a variety of different places to do it, whether in person or online. Uh, you've got Coinbase, which I like to think of Coinbase as AOL. Uh, I guess you know, we've got a variety, variety of ages here, but whenever we first got on the internet back in 93, 94, a lot of us used AOL because it was so easy. Um, Coinbase is very easy like that as well. Um, allows people to get on uh, very simply. Also got exchanges where you would wire money to uh, Bitstamp.net, uh, Bitfinance, the BTCE. Those are all some major exchanges that uh, process a lot of money. Um, people who purchase Bitcoin, buy and sell, trade. Um, they're, they're great. Different. They're relatively well known uh, exchanges within the Bitcoin community. Um, don't use Mt. Cox. 
<laughs> so, uh, and then offline, current, off, offline ways to purchase Bitcoin, uh, you can use a source like local Bitcoins to find a person who would like to sell their Bitcoin, uh, meet them up somewhere, preferably somewhere public, just in case. Uh, you've got local meetup groups, like the Houston meetup group, obviously, uh, where we will gladly be able to help you make your first purchase or just be able to get into it. Um, and as far as paying with Bitcoin, you can use different wallets. Um, there's a variety of different web wallets, uh, like Coinbase, Mycelium, Blockchain.info. These are all companies that have produced very secure wallets, uh, very secure systems where you can be able to store your Bitcoin and be able to use it to purchase things and goods and services. Um, it's as simple as pulling up the app or your web app. Typing in the you know, your password and then typing in how much money you want to send to somebody, and, or scanning a QR code and sending it to somebody. Um, and then if you're a merchant, setting up a merchant account is very simple as well. Uh, you're going to be able to. Uh, in fact, here's an example. I, I actually set up Rapid Med Urgent Care in uh, near Dallas, and uh, this is what they have on their website. But uh, if someone comes into their, their office, they have their tablet. So with Bitcoin, you're paying somewhere around $15 for, uh, for a transaction globally, about for $1,000, uh, sending something from the U.S. to, uh, I guess, say Britain, uh, to pay for uh, rent. Now, if you did that with Swift, uh, which is a bank wire, or with a credit card, you're going to be paying $50 <coughs> to 40 to 80 for a bank wire. So again, it, it's going to save you time and money if you're actually sending any type of remittances or sending anything. So why should merchants accept Bitcoin? Why not? I mean, there's there's really no uh, there's no risk to a merchant to be able to accept Bitcoin. Um, 
as long as they have a strong password. Now, you're going to see a 2 to 5% reduction in cost. There's no chargebacks for merchants, um, which is a good thing for merchants. Maybe not always the best thing for consumers, but um, many times consumers do, uh, do take advantage of chargebacks. And they're good. Uh, I don't know if anybody's ever used eBay or, um, or PayPal. don't like that. It's a way for merchants to be, able to be a little more powerful in this process. Uh, there's little no risk for accepting it. A lot of times there's a lot of free publicity for it. Whenever I signed up for Affinmed or Cares to accept Bitcoin, uh, they've been now publicized not only in their local papers and their local community uh, TV reports, but also globally. They're getting written about in the, in the Guardian across the, you know, across the pond. So, I mean, it's, it's very quickly uh, gaining a lot of traction. These things So uh, you get a lot of free publicity, and in Houston right now, there's still a lot of firsts. Um, so whenever, whenever you have a first in anything, you're going to get written about. So you know, we're waiting for someone to be the first dentist, the first restaurant in Houston to start accepting Bitcoin. But uh, I'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, enthusiastic members to also want to promote your business because you are a Bitcoin accepted business. We want to come out and spend our Bitcoin. We want to make sure that it's a Bitcoin friendly community in Houston and in Texas. Um, so you're going to have a very enthusiastic bunch like us uh, getting out there to make sure they're successful. Um, here's a list, some, a list of some major companies that have started accepting Bitcoin recently. Overstock, uh, they started accepting Bitcoin mid-January, early January, and they've already surpassed a million dollars in Bitcoin transactions. Uh, so again, showed about $20,000 of savings at least, and they're actually saving a uh, percentage of their Bitcoin and, and putting the risk as well. So they're being a little bit more aggressive than Uh, Tiger Direct also surpassed a million dollar mark within two months of allowing Bitcoin transactions. Square is a, is a big company. I'm sure some of y'all are familiar with Square. Um, it's a credit card processing company that allows uh, easy to use uh, credit card payment over a cell phone or a smart device. Um, so they've just now started accepting Bitcoin in their marketplace. And it's going to be there as well, allowing any of their merchants that use Square to accept uh, gift is a credit card process. I mean, a uh, uh, gift card processing company. Um, you can buy Amazon gift cards. And, and in fact, gift is what I use to pay for most, most of my Christmas presents this year. Um, WordPress, Virgin Galactic, uh, we've got a variety of Bitcoiners now going into the first outer space travel. Uh, CheapAir.com, if you ever want to fly someone with Bitcoin, it's a great place. Sacramento Kings, the Reddit community, Khan Academy, and OKQ, okay, they're all. Uh, there's a variety of other cryptocurrencies out there now, um, over a hundred. Um, we've got a lot, of, a lot of currencies that are completely replicating what Bitcoin is, um, just making a few minor adjustments, like Litecoin. Uh, you've got Johnny Bear, which is a, started off as a joke, uh, so she was so wow, uh, and it, it was a meme. And, but it, it turned into something a lot different. It's actually become a very strong, um, a very strong community that promotes itself. Uh, for instance, they they paid for Jamaican uh, the Jamaican bobsled team to get to the World Olympics. And yes, it's because of Cool Runnings. It's not because they wanted to do anything else. It's because they watched Cool Runnings and they wanted to make sure they got there. And it's a joke coin, but uh, it's turned into somewhat of a startup currency for a lot of people. And easy to mine, easy to use, it's a friendly community. Um, and there's PeerCoin and, and a list of a variety of other things that this graph here, a ton of others that are coming out. Um, it's, it's something where you're going to be looking at new coins every day. They fluctuate very much. A lot of them are pumped up schemes, but yeah, there's a lot of good coins out there. They always try to do something different, but what you're going to see is most of these coins, if they do something different, they're going to be able to be programmed into to some other uh, currency that will absorb Bitcoin. Uh, so get out there and test them out. It, it's, it's a lot of fun learning about them. And, and if you are into day trading, you can go onto sites like Cripsy.com and, and figure out uh, you know, which, which sites you'd like to use or which coins you'd like to play around with and uh, buy and sell them. Um, Bitcoin 2.0 is kind of the next generation of coins. Um, right now, a lot of people view Bitcoin as a currency or as a stock and are speculative. 
which isn't wrong. It's just there's a variety of other uses for it. We're coming out with that at this next generation here. With colored coins, uh, master coin counterparty, these are all different types of merging coins that aren't quite fully developed yet, but they'll allow you to do things like if-then statements, uh, which can create smart contracts, which are self-executing uh, within the blockchain. If, if, if something happens, then this money gets sent, or if something happens, then you get paid, or you, your, your rent gets paid. Um, so you've got a variety of different coins here. Uh, BitShares, Ethereum, Ripple, uh, Open Transactions. Uh, Ethereum is, seems to be uh, an interesting concept, and we've heard a lot of uh, good things about them. But uh, all of these guys have, uh, have got something going for them that are a little bit different. Um, but this is going to be something to really watch as they shake out. Um, Bitcoin is really going to, uh, in cryptocurrency in general, anytime someone says Bitcoin, just assume they're talking about cryptocurrency especially whenever they're talking about whether it will succeed or not. But I think Bitcoin will be around, and it's already uh, disrupting a lot of industries, and it's going to be able to disrupt a whole lot more. Uh, anything from private equities, bonds, microfinance, microcharity, trusts, escrows, uh, all these things will be able to be done within the blockchain, uh, and a lot of it will be automated. Uh, so learn as much as you can about it, because it's, it's really going to be something where you're going to need to know what it is, how it works, Maybe learn how to program a little bit. Learn some type of uh, programming language so that you can maybe do develop your own type of uh, uh, self-executing contracts. Uh, so yeah, this is this. Whenever I saw this slide, I, I really think this is really powerful. Um, just about anything can be digitalized, and with Bitcoin, you've got a completely unique. Texas Coin Initiative. So we, in the Houston Meetup Group, we've been meeting, I don't know, about six months, um, and we wanted to really increase merchant adoption here in Houston. Uh, so we got a group together, about uh, five to 12 different members, well, more than that, um, really got together and wanted to make sure that we increase the merchant adoption here in Houston, uh, as well as the great state of Texas. So we've got a couple of projects that we're working on. First and foremost is uh, what we're going to term the Bitcoin Alley, where we're going to try to get a street here in Houston, maybe Westheimer, I think, is going to start off on, or uh, Richmond, and uh, make sure that every merchant on the street is going to accept Bitcoin in some way, shape, or fashion, whether that be a tip jar or actually accepting Bitcoin on their first pay, uh, point of sale system. Uh, so that's one of our first initiatives, just to get some type of major for the, for the city of Houston, because I really do think it's an international community. And because we're an international community, we need to have an uh, international friendly uh, Bitcoin payment system. Why not? Uh, but yeah, so TexasCoinInitiative.com, we just launched that site. Uh, we have a nice, pretty logo uh, made by Adam. Uh, <coughs> just love it. But uh, <laughs> and our Twitter handle is at TexasCoinInitiative, our TXCoinInitiative. So uh, that's really all I got.